This is a functional 8-bit computer I built using breadboards, jumper cables, and simple logic gates. It can be programmed to do useful tasks like calculating the Fibonacci sequence or sorting lists of numbers. If you've seen homemade 8-bit computers before, you won't fail to realize that my computer is larger and yet less capable than most others. One of the reasons for this is that I'm not a computer engineer, and this is my first foray into electronics. But the main reason is that it's almost entirely built from individual logic gates. Specifically, the AND, OR, NOT, NAND, and ZOR 7400 series integrated circuits. Even if you're not familiar with these, it should give you some perspective that the device you're using to watch this video has billions of logic gates in it. And for this computer, I had to wire up each logic gate individually. But thankfully, there's only around 800 of them here. I did cheat in a couple of places by using off-the-shelf memory modules, but this is only because I would have needed around 4,500 more logic gates if I had tried to make them myself. Right now, the computer is running a program that calculates prime numbers. I wrote this program in an assembly language that I designed myself. The code is compiled into machine language, which can then be flashed onto the computer. From there, the computer circuitry takes over. Let me explain how it all works. The computer can be broken down into many simple modules. Each module performs just one part of the whole operation. Everything is kept in sync by the clock. This clock doesn't keep track of time. Instead, it keeps track of which of the four stages the computer is in. Wires from the clock go to the other modules, causing them to do things when a particular stage is active. I can advance through the stages manually by pressing a button, or I can use my signal generator to run the computer at an arbitrary clock speed. Four stages make one full clock cycle. Each clock cycle runs one instruction from the program. The program is stored here. Inside this module, there are three memory integrated circuits. Together, they store 256 lines of 24-bit instructions. An instruction could be something like, add register 1 to register 2 and put in register 1. Or it might be, jump to the 42nd line of code. This module also has some extra circuitry for reprogramming the computer. This allows me to flash new assembly code from my laptop onto the computer in about 30 seconds. The program module always loads the current instruction, and that is dictated by the program counter. This module normally starts at line 0 and advances line by line to line 255. It also has logic for jumping to an arbitrary line of code. There are several different operations each instruction can perform. This module allows you to take two numbers and perform either a binary AND or a binary OR computation. This module can perform addition and subtraction. This module can compare two numbers. It has four modes, less than, less than or equal, equal, and not equal. If the comparison is true, then the module outputs a one. Otherwise, it outputs a zero. This module can perform four different operations on a single number. Binary shift left, binary shift right, binary not, and no op, where the number comes out unchanged. Finally, there is a memory module, often called RAM, which can store up to 256 different numbers at a time. All of these modules are connected to the bus, which is like the central station of the computer. It's divided into three lanes, each with an LED display. There are two input lanes, which are connected to the inputs of the modules I listed before, and one output lane, which is connected to whatever module is currently being used. The bus is connected to the register file, which is the final and largest module in the computer. A register file holds the numbers that the computer is currently using. This register file can hold four unique numbers at a time. Each one has an LED display that shows what number is currently being stored. Often, you need more than four numbers, but in that case you can just use RAM to temporarily hold the ones you aren't immediately using. You'll notice that there's no true output device for this computer mainly because I didn't see the point in building one. The various LED displays are sufficient for knowing the output of a program, though they do require you to read a binary. For example, here the computer was given a list of unsorted numbers, and now it's showing them in sorted order. By the time you watch this, 
I will have disassembled this computer into a lifetime supply of breadboards and jumper cables. I'm personally very satisfied by how this project turned out. Building a functional computer has been a long time goal of mine. I hope you enjoyed seeing it.